Good morning, Bethany. Good morning. And welcome. Let's stand together as we praise our God. We're going to sing together, How Great is Our God. Today, we're goodness, and we're going to sing, Good, Good Father, and I want you to especially pay attention to the third verse. Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think, as you call to me deeper still. Let's sing together, Good, Good Father.
3. When the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Let's sing together, goodness of God. Thank you for being here this morning at Bethany. It is good to see each and every one of you. And um, as you heard, we're talking about goodness this morning. And uh, I guess an expression of God's goodness is uh, the beautiful weather today. And um, 
Uh, thank you for choosing to be here this morning. If you're joining us in person, hope you were greeted warmly. If you're joining us online this morning, God bless you. Um, as you came in this morning, you received a program. As uh, you're online in the comments, there's a place for you to click to uh, see all of the things that we're talking about and uh, doing today. So I uh, hope that you'll familiarize yourself with that information. I want to take a second uh, to uh, do a very important item, and that is this. Kingdom kids are dismissed. So if you will go and meet your teachers in the commons, uh, that will be great. And while they're being dismissed, let me just fill in some blanks for you about some other things that are going on. Um, want you to be aware of Fellowship Cafe. Uh, morning session's already done after the service. Join us in the lounge uh, for Fellowship Cafe, a chance to have um, uh, something to drink and something to eat together, get to know each other. And uh, that's available for you there following the service. Also this morning are next step groups. And so uh, we hope that uh, you'll join us for a next step group. Uh, there is a group that meets every week, as uh, we've said, that just talks about the message and kind of unpacks. So today you're going to be unpacking goodness and what does that mean? Uh, there's also uh, the second part of our Bethany information class. And so if you're interested in finding out more about Bethany, that is a class for you. And there's also uh, following Jesus, uh, following uh, Christ, the uh, class downstairs. And um, uh, we, uh, we hope that uh, you'll pick a class and make it a point to stay and uh, encourage uh, your spiritual growth uh, through those opportunities. Want to uh, just point out uh, one particular thing with regard to the next step classes. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to be starting a next step class called Becoming a Disciple. It's part of a series called First Principles. Um, and basically, it is a class that is going to work on giving uh, you some handles on understanding God's word. What does it mean to be a believer? And it walks you sequentially through just discipleship and growth as, as, a, as a Christian. And so if that is a class that interests you, let me invite you to take uh, a second and stop by the table out in the commons. And there's a little flyer that looks like this. This is the way you know, that this is the way we know you're going to join us. So we can make sure we have adequate texts for that class. Um, and it tells you a little bit about the class also, a little bit more in depth. Uh, if you have questions, you can always give me a call during the week and I can answer those. But uh, it is a part of not only us seeking to make sure that we provide good growth tools for you, but it is also one of the things that as uh, a part of this North Central Collective that we've been talking about. It's uh, one of the things that we are doing in common to knit our churches together, is to have a, a, a common uh, language in some sense, in a common uh, direction, at least one in one area where we, uh, we, we kind of know what we're doing and can talk about that together. So, so be aware of that if you would, and we hope that you'll join us, pardon me, next week for that. Uh, life group brochure for midweek uh, small groups is available out there. Let me say this, the couples group is going to begin meeting in November. And so uh, we're pretty close to like full. And so if you would like to it's be a part of that class, um, that is uh, going to begin meeting at the Oats in November, uh, please make sure that uh, you either let Lucinda and Mike know or you speak to me directly and uh, that would be great. Um, how many of you know what this card is? I, I mean, I would imagine that every hand in the room would go up except Earl Martin. <laughs> or, or if you're a first time visitor, this is, this is our, our Pi Squared card. And this is just a reminder of how we approach reaching out to people in our community and in our neighborhood, in our workplace, and in our families. It's a reminder that we pray for them we invest in that relationship and then we invite them to talk about and to be involved in conversation and, and events that, that tell them more about Christ. And so these cards are available out there. We want to encourage you to use those and to be thinking about those opportunities also. Last week we had Gail Gardner with us who is the director of CareNet Pregnancy Resource Center and she shared a little bit about what's going on there at the Resource Center and also personally invited you and we handed out these invitations last week to their, uh, their annual banquet at the Doubletree down in Lemonster. Um, I want to encourage you to be a part of that. There's no cost for this. There's no cost for finding out information about what God is doing through that ministry. And it also provides an opportunity for you as God would lead you to give towards the ministry. Um, but if you would like to go and transportation is an issue, will you let me know? 
Uh, if you would like to go and, you know, perhaps driving at night or you're not quite sure where it is or you're saying, oh, well, I'm not so sure, it seems so far away or, or whatever, please talk to me. And um, we can put together some transportation options. We can do a, everybody meet at the church, we'll all go together type of option, option but uh, it would be great for us to support that ministry, Gail and the ladies down there in Fitchburg. And so these little uh, invitation uh, cards are available on the table out in the commons. Invite you to uh, get that information and hopefully involve yourselves in, uh, in that ministry. Well, as I said a little bit earlier, um, there would be only one person in here who might not know what that card was about. And so I let the cat out of the bag about who this guy is down here on the front row. But uh, we are so pleased to be able to have with us this morning, oh, sorry. I clicked when it was being clicked in the back. Uh, uh, Earl Martin, who is the principal of Waterford Street School. And uh, we're gonna, uh, new school year has, is off and running. And I uh, wanted to take an opportunity. We tried to work it out for him to come on the Sunday where we talked about kindness. Because kindness has been an ongoing theme for the students at Waterford Street School, expressing, putting love into action, and caring for one another. And, uh, and so that didn't work out. So maybe goodness will be your new theme. I'm not sure. But uh, I am so glad that uh, Earl is able to be here today and to, uh, to share some time with us. We're going to find out a little bit about how things are going. So I'm going to invite Earl to con come on up. I'm going to give him a microphone, and we're going to talk for a few moments uh, together. Thanks. Kind of, yeah. I like your style, yeah, Pastor. Um, you're, you're, you're tracking with the style. But uh, it has been, um, it's been a little while since you've been here, and uh, COVID has kind of uh, created unique issues, unique uh, challenges. Um, uh, and so when, so you haven't been here, I don't believe, since the onset of COVID. And uh, we've talked different things about challenges that you're facing, and we've had opportunities uh, to kind of work with um, uh, Waterford Street School, uh, acknowledging the teachers at the end of the last school year, um, uh, Christmas gifts for, for needy families, those types of things still continued even though we couldn't have that same type of connection. Tell us a little bit about school life, the challenges of COVID, uh, as an educator, and, and particularly, how has that been impacting our community and the kids in our community? If you could kind of share some information like that. Sure. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, hosting me. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, last year and a half was challenging, uh, for sure. And um, I think last I spoke, actually, we kind of had a, you know, a real technology challenge in terms of acquiring Chromebooks, if you, if you recall, and uh, it was kind of miraculous that we were able to procure um, enough so all of our students have a Chromebook or at least have an opportunity to use one. So, um, so that was last time I think we were here. Uh, you know, the, the last year and a half, you know, has presented some real challenges um, for the staff, for the kids, for the community. Um, many of which I'm sure you're aware, but I think, you know, if I could encapsulate it, some of the biggest challenges centered around um, teaching, learning, and health with our kids. So, uh, you know, the teaching was incredibly challenging last year, particularly at our age group. If, if you're not aware, we are a uh, pre-K through first grade school, so we house all the city's pre-K through first grade students, about 400 kids, and the teaching challenge of teaching kids in front of you while also simultaneously teaching kids at home uh, through live stream and technology is really tough on staff and kids, frankly, uh, you know, to do both. Um, you know, this concurrent teaching as they referred to it was just, um, uh, it was really onerous. A, a lot of teachers described it as though it was their first year all over again because and they were basically doing double duty. They were um, trying to give the attention our young kids need that are in front of them while also trying to make sure the kids at home were learning. Um, so that, that was one of the big teaching challenges, the learning challenge. Uh, you know, little ones learn through, it, you know, as I know you know, through hands-on activities, through interacting with each other. Um, and the fact that a lot of our, our kids have to spend um, two days at home uh, 
sometimes three days at home, learning online for long stretches of time, just was a real learning challenge. Um, and you know, part of the learning too isn't just the you know, reading, writing, math. It's also the the social emotional learning that. Um, often comes when they interact. And so obviously with COVID, it was the opportunities to interact were less so, not only with the less number of days per week, but also just uh, with some of the regulations within the class. Now teachers did a great job incorporating that and the kids who were in school definitely had opportunities for that, but it just wasn't the same. Um, and then the health challenges, and this was a community challenge, but you, you know, a lot of our kids, you know, struggled with getting exercise they needed, um, getting the social opportunities they needed. You know, I feel fortunate, you know, my, I have five children, you know, we have an, a yard. So even on days when my kids were home, they had interaction time, they had outdoor play time. You know, not all of our students have that. They, they might be crowded in a, a small apartment or apartment complex. Um, they might uh, be an only child, which, you know, under normal circumstances, there's opportunities for play dates. There were points over the last year and a half where that just wasn't as frequent. So, so those were some of the, the real uh, challenges that um, you know our staff, students, and community faced. So, what one of the things uh, in the in a, in amongst all of the hard things mm -hmm. like that and the challenges, what might have been some of the silver linings, things that kind of grew out of those hard things, like we found as a church even in the midst of challenges and the circumstances, there have been incredible blessings that have come out of those hard times. And, and so what, if, what are some of the yeah. things that you've seen grow out of the hard stuff that have been really positive and, and good? Yeah, no, there absolutely was some really positive uh, elements to it. There were some absolute silver linings. You know, one of them was the acquisition of uh, technology abilities. You know, a lot of staff, learned a tremendous amount that they're still incorporating this year when it comes to technology. You know, I was just in a preschool class the other day and the teacher, instead of just reading the book where some kids couldn't see or, you know, they, they had a difficulty, she was had the book online and was just clicking through the pages so every kid in the class could, could see. It was, you know, as opposed to the reading and holding like this, it was just, uh, you know, little, I mean, that's just a small example. Uh, you know, some of the technology programs and apps that teachers used and kids used really did foster a lot of executive functioning skills. So kids were at their own group using our, what we call Seesaw, which is our communication and, and online learning app and kids would record themselves doing an activity, you know, um, bring it to the teacher table, teacher would review it, send it home. Families could see some of the work their kids were doing and, and the kids were able to evaluate how well they, they did by watching themselves online with the teacher. So, um, it, so there were some real uh, technology advantages and, and, lear and learnings that happened, the kids. I've got, got grew tremendously in terms of their understanding, their ability, um, even little technology things, you know, Zoom, which I certainly got sick of by the end because that's where I, how I communicated with staff, that's how I communicated with family and other parts of the country. But, you know, we've now at times, even for myself, it's more convenient to just Zoom. So I've done Zoom interviews now. Hey, don't bother coming in. We'll just chat online. So, um, so those are some of the, the silver linings you know, from a technology standpoint. Um, the other real silver lining from just the teaching and planning standpoint, um, last year, the kids left a little earlier than they normally did, which afforded teachers more planning time. So they planned together much more last year than they ever had. And it really yielded some great results. Uh, you know, it, it, it not only was, you know, because unfortunately, sometimes in education, teachers operate in silos and, a great lesson by this teacher might not necessarily be adopted or even heard of by the teacher over here. And so to have that time to really make not only quality lessons, but common quality lessons um, really was an, an advantage last year. And, and I will say part of it was born out of necessity because um, you think about it, teachers teach, you know, five plus subjects, you know, um, at our grade, they teach foundational reading skills. They teach 
English language art skills, which is a different realm. They teach math skills. They teach social emotional learning. So these are all these lessons, science, social studies. These are all these lessons teachers put together. And those of you who have taught before know how challenging that is, particularly in the first few years. Well, picture doing those six lessons twice or, or double because you had to do online lessons and in person, you had to do both. So the teachers basically said, the only way we can survive and do this is if we divide the work. So certain teachers, I will take care of all the social studies, I will take care of all the ELA lessons, and they divided that and it really um, proved advantageous. Um, and uh, another silver lining, you know, and it's kind of, uh, it, it, it strikes an emotional chord, but um, I view it in a positive way. We really came to understand the, the, num the, the high level of food insecurity in our community. A lot of our kids uh, don't, don't have um, three squares a day. And so the, the pandemic um, afforded our counseling staff time to really reach out to the community and say, what are your needs? And it was kind of shocking and sad to see how many came back and said, we have serious um, food needs. And so we kind of worked with some of our district folks and our district really took the lead in a lot of things, uh, you know, building a robust food pantry, building a robust uh, food um, network where we can provide those with the kids. And, and, and we were able, through government funding, we instilled to this year, um, all the kids get breakfast and lunch every day for free. So that's um, just been a, those are some silver linings. And, and you know, and the downside to some of the health stuff, there's been some real positive health um, things that we've been able to, to work on. Good, great. What, um, in different ways and to different degrees, we're kind of mm -hmm. coming out of, we're mm -hmm. normalizing, coming out of the pandemic, that kind of thing. What are some of the things that maybe for education and schooling and Waterford Street in particular, that are just, what are some of the things that are just gonna continue to be different and how will things look different going forward in terms of, of of what you do and how you care for children in our community. Yeah, no, um, the, the there'll definitely still be, um, you know, we are coming out of some of the restrictions and some of the, um, you know, uh, regulations, but, uh, you know, there's still, I'm sure, going to be some health and safety regulations that will remain with us mm -hmm. and continue. Um, you know, the, the, again, the technology, some of that stuff will remain and continue um, in, in, in a positive way. Um, and, you know, and it's one of the things that we're really focused on is closing uh, the learning gaps, both the academic gaps and also the, um, you know, social emotional learning gaps. Uh, you know, you think about it at our school, kids, kindergartners, um, you know, the, the almost 200 that come to our school, they, some of them have not had preschool. They've not had some of those social opportunities. And so we're hyper-focused on closing those gaps, those learning gaps, both socially, but also academically. And, it's, it, and, that, and that's one of the, the, the challenges and the struggles is this pandemic did exacerbate some of those gaps um, and some of those inequities. You know, some kids are fine. They had what they had needed to have at home or wherever, and some that did not happen and they are even farther behind than they would have in a normal time. So we're focused on continuing that constant analysis of how kids are doing and then what we can do to close those gaps. Uh, and you know, whether that's through, you know, we're balancing remediation with acceleration. We, it's, you know, there's a lot of research that says you just can't remediate all the time. Kids won't, kid, kids can't just keep having certain skills drilled over and over and over again, and that be their sole uh, source of learning if they want to progress at a, at a high, fast rate. So we're balancing that acceleration and remediation. And so some of those things, that analysis, that constant looking at data to see where kids are at um, and helping them, getting kids what they need, that's gonna continue with us. And that's really, we really looked at that when they came back once they came back to school. That was one of the first things we did. We really just analyzed where they're at. Um, and that unfortunately did expose some of these huge gaps, but it also um, gave us the, the good work to do. Mm -hmm. What, um, just as we kind of land the plane here, 
what are some of the things that uh, a group like Bethany, um, what are some of the things that we could look to do to help in this new day, you and what you're doing at Waterford Street in terms of reaching out in our community? And, and what might be a couple things that we can, as a congregation, pray for specifically for you, for your staff, and for, for the kids, the families in our community? Sure, yeah, and, and thank you for your prayers. I'd say that's one of the biggest things, just continue to pray for us. Uh, you know, this, and I didn't mention this, but coming back was a real jolt to the staff, uh, to me, <laughs> just because to go from having smaller classes in the building, and yeah, th there were a lot of kids learning at home, obviously, but the class sizes were smaller, uh, there was just, you know, and from my perspective, there was less behaviors, things like that. And then when you bring kids back full board into the building, um, it took a jolt to the system and, and then for the teachers to see some of the serious gaps they had to overcome with some of the kids, that, um, that, that takes a toll on your morale <laughs> a, a bit. So continued prayers for us. Um, you, you know, in that regard, I, I think, um, you know, any, any I, I really meant a lot, those uh, gift bags you guys, uh, you all gave to our staff last year. Anything you could do to boost the staff. Uh, my wife's in education too, and I was talking to her about coming today, and she said, uh, she said, you know, a lot of staff are just not in a good place this year. It was a long, very hard year and a half, and then to just have kids come back full board and to see the the level of work that is needed to really catch kids up, uh, you know, has has taken a toll on on some people, um, professionally, but also personally, emotionally. So you know, and then the kids, obviously, that's um. If I were to encourage one thing um, in your prayers for us, is that you continue to pray that we continue to focus on the kids, because sometimes we can get the burden of you know state mandates and regulations and, and expectations of how kids should do, the burden of trying to catch kids up, the burden of having kids who are acting out because they just haven't had been in an environment where they've learned how to regulate themselves, that takes a toll on, on staff. So anything you can do to uh, you know, pray that we continue to keep our eyes on the prize, which is changing the trajectory of these kids' lives, because that is kind of our moral imperative. That is something that we take very seriously at Waterford, because we are able to get kids when they're at the most um, adapt. They're at the point where we can make the biggest difference. Uh, there's tons of research that says after first grade, if kids are able to read by first grade, the end of first grade, that has a huge impact on their, not only academic trajectory, but their life trajectory. Um, and unfortunately, the, the, the research is pretty damning in terms of what happens if they're not able to do that. So, so all those burdens can take its toll. So just for us to continue to remember our moral mission, which is to help these kids have a great life. And, and we, we can have a huge impact on that. So um, I would say that, you know, any, of course, your donations have been so appreciated. Uh, one of the other things that the pandemic has, has created for not just our school, but I know anyone who's a business owner, it's really created um, a, a shortage in staff. We, we're really lacking staff, um, you know, in, we had 10, 10 teachers out on Friday and uh, we had one sub. <laughs> so we're, we had to piece it together. And we did, but um, so anything, anyone um, you know who wants to uh, volunteer for some time, anyone who wants to um, sign on to be a sub, anything like that, um, I welcome you. Um, and you know, so those are some of the things. Um, I'll continue to let Pastor Ruben know of some of our initiatives that are coming up and things that might pertain to kindness or goodness and just things that we feel you can help us out with. I will say um, Thursday, I think it's October 28th. It's the Thursday right before Halloween. We're going to do our annual, um, we call it the Horribles Parade. I, I don't love the name, but it's been around forever and it basically entails um, the fire department, the police department, our high school band leading the kids around the big Waterford block, you know, up to, and, and the kids all dress up and it's a real fun Time. When I first started there, I said, so what happens? And, and, and this uh, assistant principal said, oh, nothing. They just walk around the block. And I said, <laughs> I said, really? Is that it? That doesn't sound like too much fun, but the kids love it. 
So even if you wanted to come out, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna put pamphlets in all the residents' um, mailboxes this year to basically just uh, say, hey, come out and cheer on the kids. If you wanna give candy, great, but um, just even have it, just cheering the kids on and say, I love your outfit. It just, the kids, the kids love it. It's really heartwarming. Um, you know, I bring my family and, and we haven't been able to do it the last uh, year. So, um, but it's a long standing tradition. And this will be the last one, because um, as some of you may know, we're building a brand new uh, pre-K through fourth grade elementary school outside of, uh, Dun across from Dunn Pond. So um, this will be the last year in Waterford. It'll be the last Horribles parade. <laughs> so hopefully we make it uh, not horrible, but great. So, yeah. Great, good. Well, those are some things and that we can think about as a church, some things for us to pray for uh, as a church. And um, we just want you to know we do pray for you. Uh, Thank you. And uh, information about Waterford Street when we get is included in our prayer guide. And we, um, we appreciate what you and your staff do for our community and for the youngest in our community. And um, thanks for taking some time to be with us today. No problem. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Um, great day to be here. Great day to praise God. Um, we've got a lot of prayer requests. Obviously, um, the top of it is Waterford Street School. So please um, always try to get one of these prayer guides. Um, we put answered prayer in here in the form of praises. And Waterford Street School's prayer needs will be in here. Um, but please pray for the school. Pray for the staff, um, as, as uh, Earl mentioned, just pray for the needs of the staff. Pray for the kids. Pray that they develop a good foundation. Pray for their parents. Um, that's something we should always be praying for in, in this area is pray for the gardener, parents, and families. Pray that, that the Holy Spirit somehow speaks to their heart and, and they can just cherish their children. Um, these kids need to be cherished at this age. Um, continued prayer for Kathy Astolfi. Um, she's having new medication, um, still not driving herself, uh, but she seems to be on the mend, so please keep her in prayer as, um, as always. Uh, Bruce and Judy got down to North Carolina safely. Um, they miss us, and Judy's enjoying the, the warm weather. Uh, Joe Westbury's cousin, Jerry Westbury, is a minister in Oklahoma City, and he's been diagnosed with lymphedema in his legs and water on the knee. Uh, pray for um, healing there. Um, Joe's niece, Jessica Barnett, has a bone chip following a dislocation. She's going to need surgery. Uh, Missy Kent has been placed in a nursing home, um, so please continue to pray for her. Um, Jonathan Jones and his mother-in-law are back in Mass. Um, keep them in your prayers, but also pray for Ted as he continues to help them. Um, Bob LaPerrie, please pray for, keep him in prayer as, as he continues to work with a refugee ministry and the missions board. Also pray for Bob. Um, he's taking care of his grandchildren, and it's just a wonderful opportunity for him uh, to bond with his grandchildren. Uh, please keep uh, Ben Blake and Amy Cooper in prayer. Amy's father is visiting. Um, so just uh, lift that family up in prayer and, and pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to, to that family. Um, please continue to pray for our church. Uh, we have a lot of new ministry initiatives, Kingdom Kids. Um, just like we're praying for the Waterford Street School kids, let's pray for our kids. Let's pray for that ministry, that it grows, but, but pray more importantly that it has an impact with these kids um, and touches their hearts. And, and as well, pray for the volunteers and, and uh, Carrie Novak as, as she leads that. Um, Pam Katosh, please pray for Pam. Um, her sister, Cindy, is, um, she's overseeing her sister Cindy's care. So please pray that the um, Holy Spirit continues to, to encourage Pam and give her the strength to, to care for her sister. But additionally, pray for her sister Cindy as she goes um, through under care for breast cancer. Andre, Andre Gujan, um, we all know, most of us know Andre. Andre is um, self-quarantining at 
at home for COVID. Um, so please lift Andre up in prayer. Um, it's important um, that we not forget him. Um, Andre's kind of been in and out, um, but he is a brother in Christ. And we need to pray that, that uh, we continue to um, keep him in, in our minds and, and part of our, our Bethany family. Everett Sands, um, baby Everett, let's keep, continue to keep him in prayer as he, um, he deals with a cold. Um, and that is, Everett is just a miracle of healing. And we just need to continue to keep him and his family in prayer. Uh, Karna Ham is our missionary of the month. Um, pray for that missionary group in, in Armenia, but more importantly, pray that the violence in Armenia uh, stops. Pray for the people that have suffered from the violence in, in Armenia. And as always, we pray for the Zaza and their continued um, uh, outreach from multiple Protestant denominations, ours, the Southern Baptists, as we can try to reach that people group for, uh, for Christ. And as always, um, please pray for persecuted Christians around the world. Pray that God uses their sacrifice as a means of grace to convert the unbeliever. Pray for the martyrs and their families. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this opportunity on this beautiful day to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ to glorify your name. Lord, we are so grateful that we are blessed to be in the United States of America, that every single one of us has good things that have come from you. And Lord, we're so grateful for the blessings that you've given us. Lord, we pray for local and national revival. We ask, Lord, we beg and plead that you, if you see fit, that you institute another great awakening here in the United States. We pray for members of our church family. We pray for uh, Kathy Astolfi. We're grateful that um, her medication is doing better, uh, is helping her do better, but we continue to pray for healing power for, for Kathy. Uh, we, we're praising uh, the safe arrival of Ben and Judy Wallace, Lord, and we're grateful that You've seen fit to bring them into our lives. And Lord, we ask that you please use them uh, to touch other people in North Carolina. We lift up Jerry Westbury. Uh, we ask for healing power, as well as we ask for uh, continued encouragement from the Holy Spirit um, as he continu continues to minister to those under his care. We ask for uh, healing mercies on Jessica Barnett as she needs surgery. Lord, we lift up our sister, Missy Kent, uh, as well as Laura Smith and Mary Gallant. And we ask, Lord, that you please continue to minister to that family, but especially to Missy as, as she goes to a nursing home. Lord, we lift up Jonathan Jones and his mother-in-law, and we ask that uh, you finally settle them and help them as they uh, continue to uh, try to uh, find a place to live. And we're grateful that you've seen fit to use our brother Ted um, in their care, and we ask, Lord, that you please continue to strengthen Ted. Uh, give him patience, and uh, please continue to uh, help him cling to the power and mercy of the Holy Spirit as he, as he works um, in Jonathan's life. Lord, we lift up our brother, Bob LaPerrier, as he uh, continues to work with the refugees in Worcester. Uh, we ask that uh, you please... Um, Help him as he uh, takes care of his grandchildren and, and, and just enjoys time with his grandchildren. Uh, please, help, uh, please help that family. As he has a family member in Taiwan. We also lift up uh, Chris Walgren as uh, he continues to serve overseas. Lord, uh, we lift up Ben Blake and Amy Cooper's family as Amy's father is here visiting. We ask that you uh, please speak to his heart. Uh, we ask that a good visit is given to that family, um, as they are a true blessing to this church family. Lord, we ask, uh, please continue to bless Pam Katosh as she helps her sister Cindy. Uh, please, if, if it be your will, to heal Cindy of her breast cancer, but also uh, strengthen Pam's heart. Get, help, help her to realize that she has a church family that continues to surround her in prayer. Uh, we lift up Paula Dontremont, still in rehab. Uh, please continue to help her and, and uh, help Fran as he cares for her. We lift up our brother Andre as he's isolating with COVID. Uh, Lord, please find some way to let him know that he is not forgotten. Uh, we, we just continue to surround him in prayer. 
Lord, and we ask that you bring him back here once he's better. Everett Sands, a miracle of your healing, Lord. We ask, uh, please continue to heal him and work in his family's life. Um, help him, Lord, as, as, uh, as he just struggles to develop. And we're just grateful that we've seen such a miracle um, in Everett's life and in the Sands family. We lift up Karina Ham as uh, she works in Armenia. And we pray for peace in Armenia, Lord. And we play, pray for the comfort of those who have experienced uh, the effects of that war. Um, we pray for our people group, the Zaza. Um, we ask, Lord, that you please, if it be your will, continue to convert them from their unbelief. And finally, but not least, Lord, we lift up the Waterford Street School. We're grateful to be able to partner with the Waterford Street School. Uh, we ask, Lord, that uh, you just help us to support the staff as, uh, as they go through significant changes this year. Um, please lay it on our hearts. Um, please help us to, to help the staff in any way possible as uh, this is truly a local missions moment. Lord, we pray for the students. We pray that the staff continues to give the students a good foundation. We pray for those students. We pray for their hearts, Lord, and we ask that you please protect them as they uh, go to school, protect them at home, help them to uh, just be happy little boys and girls, Father, and help us to do whatever it is we can as a church to continue to minister that to them, to the school, and to the staff in general. We're grateful for this opportunity uh, to be partners with this uh, school here in our local community. Father, we're grateful once again to offer you worship here today. Help us to glorify your name. Help us to live out your mission. Help us to live out your message throughout our lives this week. And always until uh, we can meet again in worship. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Al and Earl. Again, good to have you here with us today. And thank you for uh, sharing. Let me invite you to take out your Bibles, uh, if you would. And... Uh, you can follow along um, as we look at the scriptures today. Let me uh, also encourage you to take out your message guide, and um, that'll connect with uh, our slides and uh, the things that we're saying. If you're using the Bible that's here, uh, page 846, we'll be in Mark chapter 10 today as, uh, as we look at, uh, at the scriptures. And again, we're looking at... Um, uh, passages or, or uh, an emphasis today on fruit of the spirit uh, and the issue of goodness, the issue of goodness. And we've said that all of these different fruit that um, uh, that we are looking at, these expressions of love, uh, really play into us having rewarding relationships and, and better relationships, conquering victorious kinds of relationships, not only relationships that are vertical and they grow as a result of our relationship with God being strong, but also the horizontal, that they are a blessing as we interact with one another. And so, uh, so each of these, as we've worked our way um, along, uh, helps us uh, grow in our relationship with the Lord and also with each other. Now, when we talk about goodness, uh, if you would, uh, as with, with many things, we're not talking about something that's necessarily clear cut. Do you know what I'm saying? What's, what's good for one person isn't necessarily good to another person. Uh, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? It's it, goodness or being good it, it has a, a little bit of nebulosity to it. Have you ever heard a parent, or perhaps as a parent, you've said, why can't you just be good? What? What, what does that mean? What, I, I thought I was being good. You mean I can't, like, do this? No, that's not good. You know, and, and so, so there's, there's a bit of, of, of cloudiness at times to this thing. What's good for one person may not be good for another uh, person at all. Um, you know, I was, we were on the, uh, we were... Um, Zooming last night with uh, with the family, talking about getting ready for uh, the holidays and Christmas and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, you know, what is? Pardon me. And and that's this is why I'm glad the kids are downstairs. Shh. You know that guy, Santa. 
What, is, what does he do? What's, what's his, his song? Do you remember his song? You better watch out. You better not cry. Better not pout. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list of what? Of the things you've done. And he checks it twice. He wants to know if you've been naughty or nice. How do I know? How do I know what, what, how do I know what ends up on what side of Santa's list? I'm going to end up with coal, you know? And, and, you know, could things get any worse than that? And then it ends, so be what? Good for goodness sake. We're talking about goodness today. We're talking about goodness. And, and we're going to see that goodness is, is a little bit different, perhaps, than we might have expected, particularly as Paul is presenting it in Galatians chapter 5. And so the first thing we want to do, and I'm going to kind of um, move my way rather quickly through the things that uh, we're looking at, is I want to look at the fact of goodness. Paul says the fruit of the Spirit is goodness, is goodness. He presents it as a fact. And so what does it mean for you and I to have goodness or to be good? Ephesians chapter 5, he says this. He says, the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. The fruit of the Spirit is made up of goodness. And again, it's not fruits, it is fruit. And so each of the nine expressions of fruit of the Spirit are connected to each other, and you can't have one without the others developing as well. They all kind of grow together. Sometimes during uh, or, or in areas when you're on a highway and they put those you know, I guess they don't want to plant anything specific, but they want the area in between the medians to look nice and the grass and stuff. So what do they do? They, they throw wildflower. Have you ever known wildflower seeds or whatever? And so all these different things grow up. And they don't want it to be weeds. They want it to look nice, but they really haven't thought about, well, that's petunias and this and that. No, it's just everything. And so as it grows, it all grows up. And in the same way, as we walk in the Spirit, as we live life according to the Spirit, these things grow in our lives. All of them, all of these, the fruit that we're talking about. Love is that blossom, and this develops and matures, and these fruit are a part of that blossom. And so we say goodness is love extending. Goodness is, is love reaching out to others. Another way to put it is this way, is that goodness, in, in many senses, is our motive. Now, the other week, uh, we talked about kindness. And we said that kindness is an expression. And we said, to say that I am kind and then to not do anything really is not kind at all. Kindness is what? It's an action. It's, it's an activity. It is the work of our hands that we, we put into the lives of others and show compassion and care. And so we have kindness. Behind the kindness, if you would, is goodness. Goodness is the motive that prompts us and moves us out to be kind. It's, it's where our heart is at, and it helps us to see Moving forward in that way, the desire for goodness, is it, it's the reason behind how I live my life. I want goodness to drive me, to motivate me. It's the motive for the things that I do. Now, goodness is not made up of outward things we do. It's rather the inward reality of who we are in Jesus. Look over in Mark 10, our passage for this morning. This is what it says. Now, as he was going out on the road, he, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. Now, what Jesus is showing this man and what we learn about ourselves is that too often we overestimate who we are and underestimate who God is. And, and that's kind of our, our thought today, our transforming truth, is that we shouldn't overestimate who we are, nor should we underestimate who God is. What does Jesus say here? He says, why are you calling me good? He says, there's no one who's good except God. Now, we know that Jesus is God. He's the second person of the Trinity. But he brings out a point here, and he says, you know, uh, you know, you look at me and you say, I'm good, and you're making a, a judgment on me and the things that I do. And you can tell, if you would, someone's goodness based on the expressions, if you would, of their kindness. 
because goodness is the motivation, the motive behind the kindness, the action we live out. So obviously this guy's seen Jesus and he says, Jesus, you obviously are good because I've seen you and your expressions of kindness. I've seen the things that you do. But Jesus here points out, you know what? Sometimes we overestimate when we look and it's easy particularly for us to overestimate ourselves. You know, we, I mean, let's, let's just face it. We cut ourselves an awful lot of slack a lot of the time. And so Jesus says, we can't overestimate ourselves, but at the same time, please don't underestimate who God is. God is the perfect expression of goodness. And we see that in his unfailing kindness towards us. He is always kind to us. Goodness is our motive. It's the inward reality of who we are in Jesus. And what we see is that this goodness leads us to kindness. It leads us in, in another way. You might say this. Goodness leads us to godliness. That we live godly lives as we allow goodness to be a motive behind what we're doing. God wants us to be like Jesus, who is goodness in flesh, God in the flesh. So there is this fact of goodness, and goodness is operative, and it comes, and it's an expression of the reality in my life of Jesus working in me, and it's seen around me and, and through me by these works of kindness. But what Oh, it's frozen. Okay. Oh, oh, I see it. It was changing in the back, but not in the front. Look at your sheet here. The next thing is this, the acts of goodness. So we have facts and we have acts. And that, doesn't that just make it so easy? We have the fact of goodness and then we have acts of goodness. And so what are we looking at here? What does goodness look like in our world, in a real world? And um, over in Matthew chapter 12, it says this, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Then he goes on to say, brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, uh, of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. So everything we do and say is an outflow of our hearts and what's going on there. And what's on the inside determines what comes out. So if there isn't goodness operating as a motive, my relationship with Jesus, if that isn't operating, then you're not going to see goodness flowing out. You're not going to see kindness acts. You're not going to see those things happening. But if goodness is resident there, then you're going to see the appropriate fruit live, being lived out in my life. Same thing over in James chapter 3. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? No spring yields both salt water and fresh. And so what, what's, what's happening here? He's saying you, there's no way for you to hide it. Maybe for a little while you can put on a front. But eventually the spring brings out what's really there. And the tree grows what it really is. And so our acts, our, our life fruit is an expression of what's going on on the inside. We, we act a certain way and we say certain things around some people sometimes, but then we might let it out amongst other people at other times. And so he says here, there's, there's this duplicity sometimes, but in the end, who we are at our core, our actions reveal that. Over in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. Thanks, guys. You guys are on it. It says this, as it was written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There's none who understands. There's none who seeks after God. They've all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. None who does good, no, not one. And so God's evaluation of us before Christ is that there's just nothing that we can do that's good. We're, we, our, our motive is corrupt. Our hearts are corrupt. We're still lost in sin. And so it, can there be any hope? for us to be good? Well, yes, through Christ. Um, and so, so what do we see here? These acts of goodness, how do they grow? Well, first thing, 
Goodness is the result of sonship. Sonship. Goodness is the result of my relationship with Jesus. Over in 2 Thessalonians. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because from the beginning uh, chose you, who, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. We can't ever do enough good things to, to warrant God's favor. Our, 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 our favor before, the, before God comes from our relationship with Christ. Colossians 3, verse 10, and, and has, he has put on uh, the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So we're renewed, we're remade, we have a new heart, we have a new nature because of Christ, and it allows us to operate with this new motive of goodness. It's made possible in our lives as we become sons and daughters. So goodness is the result of sonship, but goodness is seen in a servant's heart. Jesus himself said what? I did not come to, ser- to be served, but to serve and to give my life a ransom for many. That's Matthew 20, Mark chapter 10 again. Over in Acts chapter 10, he says this, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit, with power who went along doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. So it happens because of sonship, but it also then is expressed in serving. There are other passages here, and I'm going to to bypass them just for the sake of of brevity and time. They're on your message guide there from Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 11. But servants are people who do good. So for serving Christ, we're going to be doing good. Why? Because Jesus is good in flesh. He lives within us, and that provides a motive for us to do good and to share those acts of kindness. Number three, goodness is sensitive to sin. Paul looked earnestly, this is Acts chapter 23, looked earnestly at the council and said, men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. So what's he saying here? He's saying my, my conscience my conscience helps me see what's right and wrong and, and, and to discern what is good and not good. Do you remember what Jiminy Cricket let your conscience be your, hmm. Maybe that was an easier sell when Jiminy Cricket was just first drawn on the board. It's a little bit harder today because I think our, our consciences, just by the proliferation of so much trash, is, is, is much more easily swayed. But, but our conscience, as we walk with Christ, leads us and causes us to be sensitive to sin. Paul, he says in Acts 23, like we saw, he has a good conscience. Over in chapter 24, this being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense towards God and men. So let me ask you this. How's your conscience? For those of us who walk with the Lord and look to him and and want to be like him and grow in our relationship with him, when you put your head on the pillow at night and you just kind of take those deep breaths and you're getting ready to, how's your conscience? How's your conscience? Or do you have times during the day when you're prompted or you're thinking you're going to do something and then all of a sudden your conscience is like, ooh, it's a little poke in the side, a little jab, and there's something that wakes you up and says, huh, I'm not so sure that this is appropriate. Romans chapter 9. I tell the truth in Christ, I'm not lying. My conscience is also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. Living life in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, I develop fruit of the Spirit, I develop love, and it's expressed as gentleness, this, this enduring and this kindness that's, that's being expressed in action. And, and it, it brings me to the place as I walk in the Spirit that, that all of a sudden I'm prompted by my conscience to recognize this is not kind, this is not good, this is not right, this is not in keeping with what God would have for my life. Goodness shares with others. Do you remember a, a, a biblical character named Barnabas? He was a, a good man. He, was a, he had a servant's heart, but he also had, he, he, was also, he was called the son of encouragement. The son of encouragement. 
Barnabas lived up to his name. He brought encouragement to the church. And so he wants us to be encouragers, to be sharers, to be, a pre, to be people with positive outlooks and, and positive um, attitudes in the church. People to pick you up out of the mud and to kind of get you going and get you on your way. Acts 20, with regard to uh, Barnabas, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house. And so we have, we have this, 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 this sharing that happens that is an expression of this goodness. Other scriptures, as Paul speaks, this I say, therefore, testifying to the Lord, you should no longer walk as the rest of Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. He wrote that letter to transform the way they think and the way that they look at things. If you would, to, to have a more positive perspective, positive attitude on the things that God had them pursuing. First Peter chapter 3, or Second Peter, pardon me, Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle in both uh, of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. And he goes on in 2 Peter to talk about this, this goodness again. Made possible in lives because we are sons and daughters. It continues to grow as we have a servant's heart. And it's a sin-sensitive heart. And it leads to people being shared with and being encouraged and being loved. I think of what we do here with our kids. I think of Earl Martin and what his staff does at Waterford Street School. And it, it really, in, in many senses, is just a, motivated by just great goodness and a desire to show compassion and acts of kindness towards young ones. I mean, let's, uh, I'll, just, I'll just put it out there. I know the CE people we've kind of talked about. We, we need extra CE people. I can't imagine what it's like to have 10 staff people out and only have one sub. That's where you, that's where you just go and you pull the fire alarm and you run away. <laughs> just get out of there. But we have, we have needs in our, in our Christian education area for those young kids that you heard leave here this morning. And if you have a relationship with the Lord and you, you know what it is to be saved and for Christ to live inside of you and you walk in the spirit and you, you develop that servant's heart and you're walking in, in a greater level of, of sensitivity to sin and being what God wants you to be and, and then you begin to share and live it out with those actions, if you would, of kindness we could sure use some kindness with little kids here. And so if you're not involved in that way, let me encourage you to share some goodness and some kindness and just get on the schedule as a volunteer or I'll fill in when you need somebody. But this week as we head out, um, my encouragement for you is uh, last week we talked about kindness and we encourage you to do acts of kindness. But those acts of kindness are not gonna happen unless they are motivated behind them by a recognition that God has been good to you and, and you have all of a sudden this desire to be a, a, a person of spiritual and, and goodness uh, to others. Part of that goodness is, is sharing your relationship with the Lord. Part of that goodness is just serving and helping somebody accomplish a task. What will it be for you? What will that expression be for you this week of goodness to someone that the Lord puts in your life? Father, we thank you for today. And Lord, as we, uh, as we think about uh, your goodness to us and uh, your care for us, Lord, um, there was no greater expression of goodness than your willingness to go to the cross for us. And so this morning, if there's anyone here who has never accepted Christ, never opened their heart to Christ, Lord, we pray and we ask that that goodness would be theirs today and that they would speak to 
me or someone, perhaps the person that brought them. But for those of us who walk with the Lord and desire to grow in that way, Lord, we pray that you might help us to be good. Um, And that you might help us, Lord, to, in being good, be an example of Christ who himself was goodness enfleshed. Help us, God, to be people who grow that fruit. And may it be that it motivate us as we live in the week to come. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
Thank you again for being here today. There's a number of things that you can uh, avail yourselves out in the Commons, and we hope that you'll do so. Sign up for a class, uh, pick up information. Uh, Fellowship Cafe is open, and in about uh, 15 minutes, give or take, uh, Next Step groups will start, so we hope that uh, you'll stay for one of those. Again, thank you to Earl Martin for being here today, and I uh, hope that you'll greet him, and um, uh, as we included in our prayer guide, but also just in your personal prayer times, uh, just continue to pray for um, Waterford Street School and the staff there. Our benediction uh, today taken from Titus chapter 3, a passage that you heard a little bit earlier, but um, it just speaks so powerfully to the issue of goodness. It says this, it says, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. Doesn't sound very good to me. But it goes on to say this, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And so we thank the Lord today for goodness, the goodness he has shared with us, and let us go today and share, live out that goodness to others. God bless you as you go.